things. Hallelujah. Oh, he has done great things. Hallelujah. We got to pray. Oh, he has done great things. Bless his holy name. His holy name. 
exalt says and bless him. Bless him. Hallelujah. 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 And I can't forget all that he's done for me. I can't forget where he brought me from. Hallelujah. I can't forget the promises that he's spoken into my spirit. Jesus, I'll never forget. Hallelujah. All you've done for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We all know this song. Hallelujah. Let's bless him together. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your power, your mighty, holy power. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. We're standing, praise God, as we go before the presence of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in your great and wonderful name, we thank you for this day you have given us, oh God. You has brought us through another year. As we stand together, oh God, unified in this last day of the year. We come together, oh God, to give you glory. Thanking you, Lord, for all you have done. Thanking you, Lord, for the things that you are going to do. We thank you, Lord, for how you love us. How you keep us, oh God, running this race. The devil is trying to trip us up, oh God. But we have a mind, oh God, hallelujah, to go forth in the name of Jesus. We are looking for higher and better things, hallelujah. Oh God, in this coming year, we ask you, oh God, to strengthen us, oh God, as we run this race together, oh God. Not trying to trip one another up, but Lord God, trying to, oh God, hallelujah, glorify you. Lord, have your way today, oh God. Give us all, oh God, hallelujah, we need Jesus. Bless us, oh God, and strengthen our bodies, oh God. Some are sick, oh God, some are weak, God. But Father, we know, oh God, that you have all powers. We come today casting our cares upon you, for we know you care for us, oh God. Walk in our midst, oh God. Have your way, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and give you the glory. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Our scripture reading this morning is coming from Psalms number one. Glory to God. And it reads on this wise. It said, blessed is the man that work, walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor setteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doeth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the river of a water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the calf which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinner in the congregation of the righteous. But the Lord know 
the way of the righteous. But the way of the ungodly shall perish. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his word that we may grow in Jesus' name. Come on, give God one more praise. Hallelujah. Come on and praise him. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. a good good father hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus bless him in your name of god thank you jesus
everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. I really love the Lord. You don't know what he's done for me. He gave me the victory. I really love the Lord. If you really love the Lord on this morning, can you give him a praise? I really love the Lord. He's brought me over dangers seen and unseen. I really love the Lord. He's made ways out of no way. I really love the Lord. He healed my body. I really, I really, I really, I really love the Lord. Oh, you don't know, you don't know. You don't know what he's done for me. He gave me the victory. I really, I really love the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. 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 At this time, I'm here to welcome all of our first-time visitors, both virtually and here in the temple. If at this time we have any first-time visitors, we ask that you stand and remain standing in Jesus' name. Come on, Refuge Temple. Let's love on them. Let's love on them. Let's love on them. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Well, the praise team said it so well. I really love the Lord. You don't know what he's done for me. He gave me the victory. We don't know what he's done for you, you, and you. I'm sure if I pass this mic around, you would have such a testimony. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we want you to know that we're not just here having a simple church service. We are having a praise party. A praise party to rival all praise parties over the last year we all have come through all kinds of things but if i even look back past 2023 and 2022 and 2021 hallelujah the lord is good the lord is worthy of all of our praises hallelujah so we want you to know on behalf of our pastor apostle w michael fields our assistant pastor elder ronald young elder ronald young senior we love you with the love of the lord and we are praising the lord with you because we don't know what he's done for you you give him the praise you give him the victory if by chance you don't have a church home won't you consider this temple of worship where we are giving the lord the praise for he has given us the victory. God bless you all and welcome in Jesus' name.
All right. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Amen. You're certainly welcome. Amen. To the Refuse Temple, praise God. You that are watching by YouTube. Amen. Hallelujah. Glad screaming. Praise God. We are well, you are welcome. Praise God today in Jesus' name. Amen. It's offering time. Glory to God. We ask you now to go to your places of money as we prepare to be a blessing to this house in Jesus' name. Glory to God. God is good. As I said earlier, praise God, God has kept us all year long. Here we are, amen, the 31st of December, praise God, amen. Tomorrow is the first, New Year's, glory to God, God has brought us this far, amen, glory to God. What a mighty God, hallelujah, can't nobody do us like Jesus, keep us like Jesus, heal us like Jesus, Deliver us like Jesus. He's a wonder. Oh, yes, he is. Hallelujah. He's our everything. Yes. Amen. Just give it over to him and let him work it out. When you look around in the room, you can see, amen, people of God is still standing and holding on. Beginning of the year, some was sick. Hallelujah, diagnosed with different sickness, but yet they're standing. Because of Jesus, it's nothing we have done, but it's the grace of God. Amen, we put it all in his hand. Put it all in his hand. This, that, and the other. We put it in his hand because we know for a fact that he's going to work it out. I trust him. I believe him. Glory to God. And he's working it out for us. In Jesus' name. Let us stand. Glory to God. As we look now to the Lord. Father, we love you. We praise you. We give all glory to you, Lord. As we come now, Lord, to be a blessing unto this house. God, we ask you to take this offering. Use it for the building of thy kingdom. As we continue to run this race, oh God. Bless everyone. Givers, the one that have not. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Now we ask you to turn and face the walls and come now under the direction of our ushers. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you want to give electronically, the deacons is going to the back. Amen. You can go back there and be a blessing as well.
want to give God one more praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And again, we said thank you for all you have given today. Amen. In Jesus' name. He's a wonder. Glory to God. Can't nobody be God given. Hallelujah. He blesses us day in and day out. And I'm so grateful. Amen. Praise God. Amen. To see a coming of a new year. In the name of Jesus. We're living. Amen. This last day of 2023. Amen. Waiting for the coming of 2024. God gonna do greater things. Amen. Why? Because he love us. He love us so much. Glory to God. What a mighty God we serve. Ha <laughs> ha. Can't nobody do us like him. Nobody. Glory. Ain't nobody turn things around like him. Nobody bring us out of darkness like him. Hallelujah. He's mighty. Yes, he is. And we're so grateful today, praise God, to have our pastor. Amen. He's coming, amen, to be a blessing unto us in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Will you stand for your, your feet with me? Amen. As we receive Pastor Fields in the name of Jesus. Come on. Jesus and Pastor Fields. Won't you give Jesus some praise this morning? Come on, give him glory. Everybody in the house, give him glory. Come on and lift him up in the house. Yes, the Lord is good. He is faithful to us. He has brought us to this place at this particular time. Just lean on someone and say, the Lord brought me here this morning. And that, that might not mean much to the person you spoke to, uh, but it should mean everything to you. Just thinking about what you've been through all this year in particular, and here you are standing in the presence of the Lord. Just lift your hands and tell the Lord, thank you. Come on, put your hands together one more time, won't you? There's a scripture that I quote all of the time because it means so much to me. Had it not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? And the Lord has been good to us. Hallelujah. You may be seated. It is because of his mercies we were not consumed. His compassions faileth not. Yet they knew every morning. Great is his faithfulness. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. For those of you who have connected with us via live stream, we welcome you to the temple and we pray that the Lord would bless you today during this worship. The Lord has brought you also and he has kept you thus far. We asked everyone to wear green in memory of our late first lady, my late wife, Lady Melissa Fields. Um, we didn't just want to continue on with life without recognizing um, the fact that she made such a great contribution. Yeah. 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 And um, this this is not just about the marriage. It's it's. Beyond that, she did so much even before the marriage uh, that it would, it would take hours, perhaps even days, to talk about all of the things that she did, uh, not just to bless me, but to bless so many other people uh, in this area. It's all right to clap. Amen. So um, the church in New York also, they're doing the same thing there wearing green uh, and remembering uh, 
the things that she did. Um, and green represents life. Yeah. So yes, I'm being a little defiant, um, talking back to the depression and saying, uh, the Lord promised us life. Uh, and the life that we talk about is eternal life. So even if the earthly house has dissolved, uh, we have another building that's not made with hands. Uh, so the green speaks for itself. Uh, the Lord promised us life. Uh, and life is what we have. Just look at someone and say, God promised me life. So we want to, wanted to make a statement, sometimes what you do says much more than what you say. Uh, and uh, her passing has affected everyone, uh, her church family, her uh, natural family, even the organization was impacted uh, by her leaving here. Um, but we're moving forward remembering uh, that we will see her again uh, that same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead shall quicken your mortal body. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints. Stand with me, won't you? We just want to take a moment to remember. And the Fields family wants to share this with those of you who have suffered loss also family members, sons, daughters, people that you love that the Lord saw fit to take away. We don't want to be insensitive to the fact that you are hurting also. So in remembering Lady Fields, we also want to share this moment with those of you who are still grieving as well to let you know that we serve a God that is a God that can soothe our pains. He is a God of compassion. Let's take a moment of silence. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Put your hands together, and won't you give Jesus some more? Thank you so much for your prayers. We have, um, you may be seated, some members of the family. Uh, my late wife's sister is here with us, Sister Monique. Raise your hand so everyone can see you. Yeah. And uh, Shekinah and I want to thank you so much for your prayers. Uh, prayer works. Don't let nobody fool you. Prayer. Prayer really does work. Turn with me to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3. Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, and from there I want to go to the book of Joel, chapter 2. I want to read those passages of scripture to you, and then with the help of the Lord, we'll develop this thought that he put in my heart. Ecclesiastes, chapter 3. I'm going to read one verse out of that chapter, verse number one, and then I'll go to the book of Joel out of the second chapter and read verses 25 through 28. Father, we love you and we're so grateful. It is because of you that we are here, grateful for your strength, for your mercy, grateful, Father, for your keeping power, and we ask, Lord, that you would bless us through your rich word. Feed us today. Souls are hungry. Feed us, Lord. 
Won't you feed us, Lord, until we want no more? Touch us in this place. We need you to speak to our hearts. Move in here like never before. We'll give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. Everyone say amen. amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse number 1. It sounds like this. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. And in the book of Joel, chapter 2, verses 25 through 28, you'll find these words. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that have dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else and my people shall never be ashamed it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word and sanctify it in our hearts that we may grow thereby. To everything there's a season, a time, to every purpose under the heaven. I'll restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. You shall eat plenty and be satisfied. Praise the name of the Lord your God that have dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Look at someone and sit before you sit down and just say these words, the last day of a dead season. Yes, glory. That's what I want to talk about today, the last day of a dead season. And you have my permission to make it personal. Just tell somebody if you feel feel that you can do so, look at him and say, this is the last day of a dead season. Put your hands together, won't you give the Lord some praise. In preparation for what is the final Sunday, final Sunday of worship for 2023, my mind and my heart Thinking about two things leading up to this morning, life and seasons. Say it with me, life and seasons. Life, and spiritually speaking, is a special opportunity to experience God's grace and to serve and to have an impact in eternity through a relationship with the Lord. Now I know that's a mouthful, but if I compare that definition to how the world defines life, and I've looked it up and read and searched, there aren't too many definitions according to the world's mindset that includes a relationship with God. The last quote that I read comes from a psychologist who says life is what you make it. <laughs> you, you determine what life is all about and totally dismissed the reality of God who is the giver of life. How could you live and not consider the giver of life? So I have to use this accurate description of life as saying life is an opportunity to experience God's grace, to serve him, and to have an impact in eternity 
And that's given to me because of the relationship that I have with the Lord. Now that's living. I didn't mention money. I didn't mention the car or a house. I'm including, never extracting the fact that without him, I would have nothing at all. But in dealing with seasons, I have to deal with a period of time that is always associated with some kind of phase or activity, something that is happening. And if we were having a panel discussion, maybe some of you would chime in and share what you consider to be the season, perhaps, that you're dealing with in your personal life right now. If you examined yourself on this last day of the year, yes, if you thought about life, what season would you currently say that you're in right now? Is it a dry season or is it a waiting season? Would you consider yourself simply going through a season of trial? Are you in a season of spiritual warfare? And the list could go on and on and on. And I, I would imagine the title of the season would differ according to who we're talking to. Maybe, maybe you're in the happy season. Uh, but sometimes I have to admit it is difficult to recognize the season of life that you're in. It can even be more difficult to know how to function in the season. I don't care what you call the season. And this is my personal uh, look at it. It's, it's not scripture, but I believe and I feel that what you call the season really depends on what you're experiencing while you're going through the season. Yeah. Um, and to understand the season can be even more difficult than how you feel because you're asking questions like, how do I make it through this season? Even if it's considered a prosperous time, you have to be careful on how you receive. I don't want to get the big head. I don't want to squander what the Lord is doing. So how do I function in this season? Season. Ask somebody quickly, how do I function in this season? Now, perhaps I should have told you before you asked them, they don't really know. <laughs> They're trying to figure it out themselves. Uh, but in the natural sense, it is logical for me to say that no matter what season you're in, seasons change. Yeah. Say it with me, seasons change. And we know we can keep it natural. There are seasons, winter, spring, summer, fall, just like the natural seasons change. So do spiritual seasons. Solomon writes this in a backslidden condition. In the Hebrew context, you would not see the word Ecclesiastes. You would see the Hebrew word Koeleth, which means a collector of sayings. He is giving us a synopsis of what he feels life is all about. And he deals with it as it relates to seasons. He says to everything, say it with me, everything. everything. He says in his wisdom, even in his backslidden condition that I've discovered that for everything there is a period of time, a season. He tells us uh, that God has made everything beautiful in its time. So he gives me wisdom in how to manage myself by seeing the first step in flourishing in any spiritual season is recognizing which season you're in. <laughs> if you don't know, ask the Lord, what kind of season? Is this? If you can't understand what's happening, open your mouth and ask God what kind of season is this? Are you, are you in the springtime of your journey? Because Solomon writes to those of us who are just beginning, perhaps the younger group of the congregation, remember your creator in the days of your youth. 
before difficult days come or are you in the summertime of your journey? Uh, and here is where you have developed some kind of knowledge or experience with the Lord. Uh, and this is where you find out that there are requirements to whom much is given, much is required. You find out that you are responsible for what the Lord puts in your life. And then there are those who are in the autumn of our journey. And by the time a person gets to this stage, you, you've been in the way for quite some time. Maybe you, you've been saved for a few years and you've endured some hardships and you have not just knowledge, but you've developed some wisdom that didn't come from reading a book, but it came because you went through something with the Lord. So you're not just talking to talk. You're not just running your mouth, uh, but you're talking because you've been there. You've done that, and you have enough sense to know that if God wasn't there with you, you would not have made it this far. And you're able to give some knowledge to someone else who's just starting the journey and telling them, you know, because I've discovered that there are folks who always want to tell you to pray, but they're never in prayer service themselves. Or they'll, they'll tell you to trust God, but they're always looking in other avenues themselves. They're not showing you anything because they haven't been through anything and they have really nothing worthwhile to say because they don't really have the experience that it takes to say, I know God can because I allowed him to do it for me. Hallelujah. Now that's a testimony. When you've reached a season in your life where you're not just talking, but the seasons have got seasoning in you. Oh, I like that. Yes. The season has brought seasoning in you. That's, that's, you're not a seasoned saint just because of what you have on. That doesn't make you a seasoned saint just because you knew what the uniform was. But what gives you seasoning is the tears. The saltiness of the tears. The, the abrasiveness of life has allowed you to be able to feel what you say. My God, I like that too. Well, you're, well, you're not just saying he's a healer but while you're talking about it you can feel his healing power scream down your row and say i know what i'm talking about yeah thank you father Chloe. But there is an area of the season discussion that the lord dealt with me and it was a question that arose in my spirit. You know how sometimes you're meditating and you're questioning within your spirit. And the question that arose while I was meditating on the season stuff is what about when seasons linger? When you've been in the season, it's almost like a cycle, but it's, it's really the same season. The season should have changed, but it's lingering. I'll, I'll give you an example. If sometimes when it's supposed to turn cold, it's still hot. And it, it might be good for those who are enthusiasts about the climate, but it's really doing damage when a season lingers and it hasn't changed on schedule. And I want you to catch this because even in the spirit realm, if you function in the spirit in that season that you're currently in, if you do it right, the season will change on schedule. But if you fail to trust God, if you fail to lean completely on him, then that season that you're currently in will linger. Sometimes the intrusion of the summer heat on colder seasons presents a challenge to crops. It affects global warming. It affects viruses and 
your ability to fight off diseases and sicknesses. All of this is true, and it happens because sometimes a season will linger. Hallelujah. It's supposed to leave. It should have been gone a long time. But because you would not learn the lesson you were supposed to learn in the season, it lingers. Hallelujah. So look at somebody, help me preach and say, hurry up and learn the lesson. Yes. Because every one of us, no matter what the season is I'm going through, there is an expected time for that season to change. The trouble to end if you hearken to the Lord's voice. Am I helping someone? You can't be so hard-headed until you ignore the voice of God while you're going through what you're going through. I think that's what Israel's problem was. They, they would not heed to his voice. Hallelujah. They wanted it their way. And instead of functioning correctly in the seasons that they went through, they complained. They bickered, they argued, they withheld worship and praise instead of being consistent in their walk with God. But here Solomon gives us wisdom and he lets us know, and he's in a backslidden state. He, he has left the confines of the house of God. Here is someone who was given wisdom at an early age, but the, the troubles of life baffled him and he walks away briefly from the word of God trying to discover the season stuff and what life was all about only to come back and say something like this vanity vanity all is vanity what would it profit a man to live his life and and i'm paraphrasing now and never acknowledge the realness of this god who is the giver of life so it's not what i have that matters it's who I have and it makes no sense if I'm really going to get it right to walk away from who I have and only concentrate on what I have because the truth is I wouldn't have what I have if it was not for who I have he is the giver of life. So help me preach again before I dig deep and tell someone all you really need is God in your life. Yes, because there will be seasons where your money won't help you. There'll be seasons where friendships won't help you. Seasons where your job position won't help you and you'll need God. God to help you through that season so hallelujah Solomon goes back to God and says my whole duty then should be to honor God live for him and no matter what season I'm going through if he's with me I can make it through that season hallelujah scream at somebody and say if God is with me I can make it through that season yeah in the book of Joel as uh, hallelujah many of the other Old Testament prophets Joel speaks to his people at a moment of crisis there yeah, hallelujah was a spiritual crisis and uh, it was signified by what was going on in the natural and some of you may not realize it but a lot of times what we experience naturally is signifying what's really going on spiritually so the immediate crisis was an extraordinary severe plague of locusts and it was combined with drought. God had been telling them, hallelujah, prophet after prophet, stay with me, walk with me, listen to me, obey 
me, love me, worship me. There's no good thing that I'll withhold from you. Trust me, serve me, let me be the king of your life. He would say things like, you don't need the world. You don't, the, you don't need their system. Trust me. And uh, he would say things like, uh, you are of my kingdom. I'll let you walk through the high places of the earth and I'll feed you with the heritage of Jacob. He, he would say things to them like, I'll bless you. Hallelujah. Coming out and going in. And blessing, I'll bless you. Hallelujah. Multiplying, I'll multiply. Anyone that blesses you, I'll bless them. I'll make it so that if they curse you, I'll, I'll slap them in the head and curse them back. I'll, I'll turn things around. They'll come one way against you and I'll make them run seven different directions. Thousands shall fall at your side. 10,000 at your right hand. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Every mouth that opens itself against you, thou shalt condemn. If your ways please me, I'll, I'll even make your enemies your footstool. And when the enemy rushes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against them I will bless you so much I'll give you so much favor hallelujah that even your enemies will have to look at you and say surely the Lord is with and they rejected all of that they wanted the world. They, they wanted the wisdom of the world. They wanted the things of the world. When God had already told them, the earth is the Lord's. Hallelujah. Everything you see belongs to me. He told them that I will make you lenders and not borrowers. You'll be above only even in troubled times, even in troubled seasons, hallelujah, you will be the head and not the tail. I'll confuse the enemy. Even when you're supposed to be in bondage, you'll live in the best house. You'll, you'll have the best positions. I'll make you the manager. They, they might make a little more than you, but I'll stretch what you have. I'll make them look broke and I'll make you look rich. I'll confuse the enemy even when he tries to trip you. Every, every hole he digs for you, I, I'll make him fall in the hole. I'll, I have blessed you. I, I'll make it so that even the demons of hell will recognize the blessings of your God that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. If you understand what I'm saying, scream down your row and say, the Lord has blessed me. So, what? Hallelujah. But here they are. Oh, towards the end of the book, we see that their faith had faint. They, hallelujah, they had relented. They had resigned themselves to doing things their way. And because of this, there's now a plague of locusts. Vegetation for years had been, hallelujah, eaten up and destroyed. No crops and the water has dried up. And just like it was naturally, they had dried up spiritually. They, they allowed life to dry them up. They, they allowed the disappointments of life that came many times because of the poor decisions they made. They allowed it even to bring them to a place of bitterness. 
bitterness, not only towards one another, but sometimes you can be in a season so long until you have developed a bitterness towards God, sitting in his house complaining about him. How could you come to God's house with an attitude towards him and he's the man of the house? And that's how Israel was. And it had gotten so bad where they would act like they were worshiping him in his house and go back to their house and you'd find idols in the bedroom and idols in the living room. And God says, are you serious? Because they have lips that you formed with your hands and hands that you formed and chiseled with your own hands. They can't touch you or hear you or see you but I sit up high and I look down low and I see you. I, I hear your cries. I've kept you even when you were wrong. I kept you. Somebody needs to understand even when you you were wrong God kept you anybody honest enough to tell somebody even when I was wrong he didn't let me die in my mess even when I was wrong he kept me so now they're in droughts they were dried up naturally they were dried up spiritually their crops were destroyed their food supply was deplenished it, it was so serious that it affected the harvest hallelujah of year after year by the time they got to the end of the year hallelujah they're looking at how much weight they lost and how weak they were and how famished they were how dry the soil was hallelujah they were thinking about survival when they needed revival hallelujah and some of you are in survival mode hallelujah because you've been in that season for a long time and when you're in the season too long you come to a place that I call a dead season when nothing is working it seems like even when you come to a place of prayer because you've been there so long sometimes you're doubting even the prayer that's coming out of your mouth and uh, hallelujah they looked religious they, they still went to church but they had no power they, they still made sacrifices but their heart uh, wasn't in it and uh, even when they came to God uh, it wasn't in faith they were fussing at God uh, how long you gonna leave me in this when, uh, when you gonna help me get a job when you gonna do this uh, baby that's not praying when you come to God acting like who you are and like he works for you and like he serves you but it is he that has made us I feel my help already and not we ourselves if, if you gonna come to God you gotta come right you can't show no credentials hallelujah your credentials don't mean anything to God he don't care nothing about your degrees you got to just say Lord it's me yes it's me Lord standing and you remember the song it's not my mother it's, it's not my father but it's me Lord Standing in the need of prayer. So when you read the book, you'll understand that they were still managing to remain religious. But uh, hallelujah, but their hearts had already strayed from God. And uh, oh, we can 
can suppose a little bit more that uh, some of it was because of the drought and uh, some of it was because they were tired of the lingering season and uh, hallelujah the only change that occurred was uh, they were more hungry today than they were yesterday yeah. hallelujah but Joel speaks to them and he tells them to wake up <laughs> look at your neighbor say wake up <laughs> and uh, he was not speaking naturally he, he was speaking to the spirit man it's time for you to wake up up and realize that the danger that you're in is much greater than what you see with your natural eye. Hallelujah. You've got to make sure that your hand is in the hand of God and return to him, not with outward appearance but fasten your hearts to this God and you've heard many preachers say it before stop playing church stop doing this I'm just gonna say keep it real if you love him act like you love him if you want God act like you want God and don't treat God like he's your servant and no, come to God and learn how to say, not my will, but your will be done. I feel my help, so he exhorts them, wake up my soul, wake up your praise, wake up your spirit, and realize that had it not been for God, as bad as it's been, it could have been even worse. He's been keeping you even during your misdirection, even during your negligence. He was there. So he's admonishing them. Hallelujah. Come to God. Give him your hearts. Not your garments. He don't care nothing about your uniform. It ain't got nothing to do with the prayer scarf that's on your head. It ain't got nothing to do with where you sit in my house. But where is your heart? I hear that song in my spirit now. I belong to Jesus. And Jesus belongs to me. He's saying return to God. Return to God and he will spare you. Return to God and he will bless you. He'll, he'll restore you. He'll, he'll renew your strength. And that's what God woke me up to say on this last Sunday service of 2023. Make sure your heart is fastened on God. Joel speaks these words and he says, but now, even if your situation looks bad, we serve a God that can turn it around and he uses one word and to some of y'all it's become a dirty word but I'm going to say it anyway repent hallelujah some of y'all act like somebody cursed at you when he said repent I'm not cursing at you I'm trying to turn your curse back into a blessing if you hearken unto my voice blessed shall you be in the field I'll bless you coming in and coming out hallelujah look at somebody just say repent and understand repent doesn't mean just say you're sorry it means turn your heart around 
I want you to love God more than you love the world. Joel, his message is timeless because we as the people of God continue to face crisis and difficult times in our lives so he's not just speaking to them then but he's speaking to us right now scream down your row and say what season are you in right now hallelujah I want you to understand that there is a way hallelujah to trigger a change in your season I'll show you how to do it lift your hands and just say Lord if you see anything in me that should not be take it away create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me plot out my transgressions and restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and I hear you talking back to me I've been saved for 20 years who you think I, you talking to I'm talking to you with your self-centered self-righteous self that's why you've been stuck in that dead season can't get a breakthrough you've been struggling for 20 years hallelujah but I hear the Holy Ghost screaming in my spirit enough he is in the you're in a dead season you can't even name or explain how you feel try to praise God and all we've been doing is making noise but there's no unction there's no anointing in the praise something is wrong church don't you know that when God's people even praise the anointing cuts through the room and demons flee and sickness disappears something's wrong I five your neighbor and ask them how long you been in that season were you just going through the motions just coming to church to be in church and leaving the same way you came to church and you forgot that he whom the son has set free is free indeed can I preach in the house scream down your row and ask him again how long have you been in that season lingering hanging around messing with your joy messing with your prayer life messing with your praise scream it out in the atmosphere enough is enough I gotta bring a close to this oh Lord and I want you to know that this is just more than the last Sunday of the year this is more than just the last Sunday worship I came to serve the devil notice and shout in his ear and say this is the last day of every dead season that's in this room tell your neighbor the devil is a liar I feel a breakthrough right now the last day the last day the last day the last day of a dead season did you hear what I said the last 
stay. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. I need you to prophesy to your neighbor. Lay your hand on them and say, neighbor, excuse me, but I need to plant a word in your spirit because I don't want the devil to feel like you going to leave here the same way that you came, but I feel a closing a transaction taking place in the spirit realm I hear I hear the Lord say touch not my anointing I feel it in the atmosphere I hear God say whom God bless no man can you better say it out of your mouth lay your hand on that shoulder and rebuke the devil and speak in them and say the last day of a dead season the devil is a liar hallelujah I'm going to bring streams in your desert place. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Say yeah! Thank you, Father. I came to speak to you. Because it's not just this year. It's been over the years. Some of you are stuck in a season. And you become dead weight. I feel the heaviness. You're just going through the motions. You got a church mask going. Hallelujah. But the Holy Ghost said today, I'm going to shut it down. Yes, I am. It's been dry, but I'm going to let it rain. It's been broken, but I'm going to fix it. It's been down, but I'm pulling it up. It's been crooked, but I'm going to straighten it out. Lift your hands and just say, do it, Lord. Do it. Hallelujah. I need the breakthrough. Do it, Lord. I need to be healed. Do it, Lord. I need to be loosed. Do it, Lord. I need you to pick me up. Do it, Lord. And I hear him say, I will. I find three people and say, I told you, this is the last day of that dead season. I heard the prophet say, and I will restore to you the years that the locusts have sown, have eaten, and the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the pommel worm, shake somebody's hand and say restoration is coming to your house. He said, I sent it. I put you through that season. I wanted to see if you would praise me. I put you through that. I wanted to see if you still love me. But I'm shutting it down. Hallelujah. I'm going to flip a script. I'm going to feed you. Did you hear what I said? Put your arms around somebody and say, get ready. Get ready for a turnaround. Hello? 
Thursday of the dead season you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and be satisfied and be satisfied put your arms around yourself and say it with me and be satisfied and I'm going to give you a new praise a brand new hallelujah a brand new thank you I'm going to turn that frown into a smile I'm going to bless you so much until you laugh in the devil's face say yeah yeah hallelujah and I'll give you a testimony. The Lord has done great things wherever we are glad. He's done wondrous things, marvelous things. And I'm going to praise Him. I'm going to glorify Him. Hallelujah. And my people be ashamed I need you to step to three people and just say this when you come out of this you gonna be brand new when you come out of this you gonna be brand new you won't even look like you've been through it I'm gonna make you pretty all over again say Yeah. 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 I feel a praise in my spirit. Hallelujah. Get somebody by the hand. Squeeze on it a little bit. And say, neighbor. I want to say it one more time before I start dancing in this house the last day of a dead season never mind what it looks like now change your attitude and say like the prophet although the fig tree shall not blossom or the fruit is in the vine hallelujah I see no meat and the flock has been cut off there's no head in the barn yet I will rejoice and I will joy in the God of my salvation I don't know who I'm talking to but in my spirit I feel like everybody in this house needs to hear this so lay your hand on yourself and say this is the last day of this year dead season I'm getting ready to step into my due season if you believe that I don't care which direction you move move in some kind of direction step out and step in I love God told me to tell you it won't be the same after this it won't be the same after this you won't be the same if you receive it come on and touch my hand and say it won't be the same after this this is the last day of my dead season say yeah say yeah say yeah say yeah he's son of a boy he's son of a son 
the last day I'm walking out of here and I'm walking into my heat oh the sun down the sea the last day the last day the last day the devil is a liar I feel a closing I feel a move I feel a shifting I feel my healing I feel a breakthrough say yeah say yeah say it out of your mouth this is the last day I'm not going back to it I'm not living back there it's over say yeah come on touch and agree say it out of your mouth the last day the last day hallelujah 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 I'm walking in my breakthrough hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You better come with a praise. You better come believing. The Shandabu. He had a Hi, in the house I'm telling your season's about to change your season is about to change say
gentlemen here. This is the last day. You won't see it no more. Lift those hands in the sanctuary. Holy Ghost is moving in this place. <laughs> yeah. Glory. Spend some time worshiping. The Lord is still moving in this place. Allow the Holy Ghost to minister to you. Lift those hands and, and talk to the Lord. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much you appreciate his goodness. I declare unto you that today the last day of your dead season. Start thanking God for the change that's about to take place. Say it out of your mouth. Put a thank you in the atmosphere. Even if you don't feel it yet, say, Lord, I thank you for the shifting thank you for the turnaround I, I thank you for the door you're getting ready to open that door that was shut in my face earlier I want to thank you I feel that that door is getting ready to swing right open spend some time before we pray worship the Lord thank him Thank you. I feel it. I feel it. Something's getting ready to break. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I've given them your word. I've shared with them what you put in my heart to speak 
take every word that's been spoken, plant it deep within us, bring forth harvest. We ask in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Put those hands together, won't you? Those of you who connected with us via live stream, I want to pray a special prayer for you. You desire prayer. Put your name in the comment section so we could establish an electronic prayer line. We want to take a moment and pray with you and for you. Whoever you are, wherever you are, it's no mistake that you connected with us today. You desire prayer. Put your name in the comment section. We'll wait for you. Hallelujah. Jacqueline Grant, we're praying with you. The names are beginning to come in. Glory. Bow your heads. Father, we love you so much. And there are those who have connected with us this morning. They need prayer. The Dempsey family. The Flulin family. We're praying for them. The Sims family. Dorian Wilson. We're praying for you. Yes. God's grace and mercy. Caleb Harris, Mary Brewer, Nicole Wooten, and family, Jamari Jenkins, we're praying for you. Father, in your precious name, blessings, healings, deliverance, we need it today. We know that you're able to reach us no matter where we are, stretch forth your hand. Whatever the need is, supply, strengthen, and heal in the mighty name of Jesus. And the names are still coming in one by one, home by home, situation by situation. Meet the needs, Lord. Bring healing and deliverance to their doorstep. Bless as only you can bless, and we receive it all. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say it with me, won't you? In the name of Jesus. Now put your hands together and give the Lord some praise. The altar is open. In the temple you desire prayer. You want to be baptized into that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come. Come. You have not received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Come. You have a special need of prayer. Come. 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 Come.
in the house. Put your hands together. Give the Lord Jesus some more praise. Glory. Glory to God. Glory. Is there one today you want to make Greater Refuge Temple your place of worship? You want to be a part of this congregation? You want to join this church? Come so we could extend to you the right hand of fellowship. Come, is there one? Glory. Sister Tate, you've been coming here for a while. I, I want to say what took you so long, but I won't say that. Welcome to Greater Refuge Temple. Anyone else you want to make Greater Refuge a place of worship? Come. Kyle Saunders wants to be a part of Greater Refuge Temple. Anybody else? Listen, we're, we're not perfect, but we are saved and striving for perfection. Everybody needs a table they can sit at. Come. 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 This is Demetrius Johnson. Welcome him to the family. Come on. All right. Come on. Listen. Anyone else? All right, Refuge, give Jesus some praise. Before I give the benediction, I want to get a sacrifice from you. I'm not going to tell you how much to give in this sacrifice. It's between you and God. And I am aware, perhaps you don't have anything to give in this sacrificial offering. Just come touch the basket then. The Bible says your obedience is then better than the sacrifice. But I pray that the Lord would put something in your hand for the next time. Because that same book says he gives seed to the sower. And if you're a giver, he'll make sure a seed is in your hand. But those of you who will, let's make a sacrifice. Whatever that sacrifice is. Father, we love you. We thank you. We cannot pay you for what you've done but we want to make sacrifice in your presence. Receive our sacrifices, we ask. And even those who may not have anything to give because of their obedience, they too will receive a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Everyone who can stand, stand. Turn to the wall. Bring that sacrifice, won't you?
God bless you. And thank you so much for joining us today in worship. It is my prayer that you are enlightened, enriched, and encouraged by the word of God that went forth. Always praying that the Lord would strengthen your hearts and minds, bring you to a place that he wants you to be always. God is able to do just that. And just in case you are looking for a church home, want you to feel free to be a part of Greater Refuge Temple here in Washington, D.C. We'll be glad to take you under watch care and we'll do our very best to help you find a permanent place of worship in your area. We all need the Word of God and we all need a place where we can go and be fed with the truth of God. And if you would like to plant a seed in this ministry and you haven't been able to do it yet, feel free, follow the instructions on the bottom of your screen. Our technician will make that information available to you. Admin at grtdc.org. You can send your prayer request, your request for membership, and someone from our staff will get back to you. Looking forward to meeting you again. Join us next week, won't you? But until then, be careful, be prayerful, and be holy. Shalom, shalom.